What is up guys? Welcome back here to another Rise of Kingdoms content. In today's video, we're going to talk about five reasons why you want to leave an Imperium Kingdom. If you guys like Rise of Kingdoms content, do consider subscribing and turn your notification on and also press like into the video. Now, you guys might not know what an Imperium Kingdom is. So if you look into the uh, Kingdom Overview with the list of kingdoms in here, whenever you see this type of symbol, it indicates the kingdom is Imperium. Um, for the easiest way to describe an Imperium Kingdom, this is the top kingdom within Rise of Kingdoms. There's a lot of spenders, a lot of powerful players. There's a lot of populations, typically right around three to four alliances um, that are full. So those are some of the description of being an Imperium Kingdom. So I was in an Imperium Kingdom for about two years. So in this video today, we're going to talk about the top five reasons why you would want to leave an Imperium Kingdom from my experience and my point of view. Of course, there's a lot more um, reasonings out there. So feel free to comment them in the comment section below if we don't tackle those topics since we're only making five reasons. I will also make a video on top five reasons on why you should stay in an Imperium Kingdom because this is a very subjective on the playing style. Um, so today, since I've you know, already left um, 1412 and I've left the Imperium Kingdom status, and I can share you guys you know, some of the reasons why I made these big steps and big leaps. So number one, I would say whenever you're trying to compete in the Imperium Kingdom, um, the Mightiest Governor is very difficult. Uh, a lot of players there uh, will, you know, typically get the nominations. So, for example, um, you're not a big spender or you're just a medium spender for, like, you know, my case when I was in 1412. Whenever people sign up, of course, they're going to prioritize players who they know can max out the crystal tech uh, at a heavy fashion, or a max fashion or something like that. So being in Imperium Kingdom, you have a lot more competition when it comes to Mighty as Governor. If somebody is much stronger than you, then you're not going to be able to get it. Um, in terms of like being in a non-Imperium Kingdom, um, when there is somebody who is not a... Well, typically in a non-Imperium Kingdom, there's not a big, big spender compared to the you know, Imperium Kingdom. Yes, there is still hierarchy in the um, non-Imperium Kingdoms, like from where I'm at. Of course, they're going to prioritize it to the players, but the level of like competition with between like gears and more competition, more players to compete with is going to be much less in a non-Imperium Kingdom. So you'll have a higher chance. You'll just probably need to scout like how powerful the players in the kingdom and how much whale they have in in a non-imperium kingdom because there's still some whales even here in our alliance there's some people who buy stuff but not ridiculously like when i was in uh 1412 there was like maybe a minimum of 10 gold chests every single day something like that um so the mightiest governor is definitely you know a big issue uh for you know, getting your roles in the game. I mean, if, if when you go to Imperium Kingdom, if you're a spender in CDC, if you don't increase your spending, getting into an Imperium Kingdom, you are not going to be able to do any rallies or defending garrisons. So for me, I didn't really enjoy that part or didn't enjoy that role. So this is one of the big reasons why I kind of like, hmm, you know, I kind of want to switch a little bit of my gaming style in here. Not, not, not that it's bad. It's just I want to change what I've been doing for about two years. So number two that I think that really made a big impact into my decision making as well is, you know, whenever there is a pass opening, what is the first thing that comes into your mind? You know, when there's a pass opening, let's say this is KVK, pass opening, there's so many players in here and in here. It's like, it's crazy. It's very crowded. Um, one of the biggest reasons why I didn't want to like, you know, stay in the Imperium Kingdom is because of the heavy lag. I mean, I'm playing this on my ROK PC already, but the lag is very intense and there's delay. And whenever there's a huge delay, what happens to your troop is that they, you know, they literally just die. Um, it is very difficult and I don't like diving in and wasting resources, doing all that. So lag plays a big factor, you know, especially with your kill points and everything. So I wasn't really enjoying much when the lag was so heavy. Um, the Imperium status is just too much, uh, too much player in in, in that in that same map. For me, I kind of missed the part where there's not a lot of uh, players or not a lot of population within the kingdom or within the server when you get into KVK, and it's not gonna be laggy. 
Um, when RK PC first came out, it wasn't very laggy, but ever since it's been laggy a little bit, so it's been an issue. So that also like kind of you know nudged me a little bit, like oh my god, I don't want to keep dying in the field because of lag, or, or recently I was experiencing more of a delay, like three second delay or four second delay that's huge um you, you can get your march killed by having that delay because it'll march towards the enemy territory um another thing that i find um quite useful being out of imperium kingdom is whenever you're trying to find resources so like right here boom i already found a level six node that was pretty quick right so if i want to find level five easy once the level six are gone it just allows you to get more resources and not just that we just saw a gem node earlier so I mean, depending on how many people are farming gems, but in in the lower, you know, seed kingdom out of the Imperium, you can find, you know, the resources that you really want is really easy. So in here, we tip, we kind of really just have one strong alliance. So the second alliance is kind of like not too strong. So, I mean, there's still population. There's 124 or third, 135, 137. Um, here we got 155 out of 155. But there's abundance of resources as well. So in the whole map in here, there's really no shortage of resources if you really need. But of course, you kind of want to separate away from some of the cluster as well so that you can, uh, you know, search for the resources much quicker with a quick find tool. But the biggest thing really is the um, availability of resource node that allows you to farm better. Number four, um, I would say the inability to play certain roles. We kind of talked about this with the MGE and the spending. So this kind of ties back into this. So back then when I wasn't in the Imperium Kingdom, I was still able to do like rallies and as well as like, um, you know, garrison defending. And now with me migrating, um, I was able to play some certain roles, especially in the Ark of Osiris. Since the player base in here is not as crazy as in 1412, where people are ridiculous monsters in the game and how much they spend and they are ultimate Krakens. And especially this new kingdom is slightly younger. There is not a lot of like mega spender. And like I said, there's not a lot of like super whales. Uh, we do have some whales in here, but they're not like crazy to where like it's going to be like Amada Ziz. Uh, you know, controller, maybe Mad Phantom, uh, maybe Bunny, you know, it's not, it's nice in here because if you want to play certain role, let's say you're from Imperium Kingdom, you have good gears, but it's not too good enough for Imperium status, then migrate into lower seed, and when you migrate into the lower seed, you're going to be able to do the rally, do the garrison the fitting, you'll feel a little bit more useful. Now, this is a little bit more for the spenders, not really much for the free-to-play, but that's one of the benefits if you're a spender and you don't want to be a high, high spender. Migrate to a lower seed. You'll be more useful. Trust me, people will probably appreciate you more because, you know, we always appreciate people who does the rally and the garrison defending. All right. So number five is another thing that I saw in an Imperium Kingdom is that once you join an Imperium Kingdom, you are basically now a number because there's like so much in the population. They Like the leadership could not will not be able to like take care of you so in a smaller kingdom the community is tighter and the leadership can definitely like you know kind of get to know you and as well as like you know kind of take care of you a little bit um and you're not just a number in the smaller kingdom is going to be a little bit difficult to be in the heavy duty fight like two three you know two hours of fighting even sometimes one battle report um in an imperium kingdom you're most likely going to be more of the food or what they call father so um, pick your choices, uh, you know, both situations being or out of Imperium Kingdom have their own benefit on different playing style. So if you want to get out of the Imperium Kingdom, that's going to be more relaxed um, approach into the game. But if you're going to be going to the Imperium Kingdom, of course, that's going to be a lot more, um, you know, dedication and time and putting a lot more effort into it to maintain your status to get there. But if you're really just looking to be laid back having fun, like what I'm doing right now, that thing going out of Imperium Kingdom is actually a good approach. But with that being said, these are some of my experiences and, you know, my thought process on why I left the Imperium Kingdom. And if you guys have more things to add on why you should leave an Imperium Kingdom, let me know in the comment section because I think majority of you guys who watch this video as well are not in the Imperium Kingdom. But how many are actually in the Imperium Kingdom? I want to know. Anyway, rockers, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys again next time.